once you have the data for your transactions in the application, you can do several different things with it. One option is to just view the transactions under the transactions page here. The other option is you could generate a report based on the transactions. And the third option, which was we're going to be discussing here, is exporting the data. So exporting the data is getting the data outside of the application and into a different file format. So like a CSV file or an Excel file or any of the formats that we support in the application. This is just going to allow you to modify or edit those transactions, generate your own type of reports, and or insert this transaction data into some sort of third party application or, you know, do whatever you wish to do. Um, so to configure an export, we've got several different options that are available to you. Um, and you have several different selections on how you want to get that data outside of the application. So we're going to go over some of the options that you have to export. So the first option here is site. So you can export one site at a time or you can export all of your sites. We also have a selection now so that you can pick and choose which sites are going to show up in this export. So we're going to just select all for now. And over here, we have an account selection. So you're going to either select all or the particular account that you're looking to export the transactions for. So we're going to select all. The next thing we have is, do we want to include network transactions? So in general, the system is set up to run a report based on the proprietary card transactions, which are local card authorizations. If you're doing network transactions, that would be anything like a Visa, MasterCard, or a Fleet Card transaction that's being authorized from a host as opposed to locally. Then you may want to include network transactions in your export. This is going to allow those transactions to also be exported on your Excel sheet or your CSV file or or however you would like to export them. We also have manually entered transactions. So the application transaction page has an add button so you can manually add a transaction as opposed to one that was authorized from the fuel site controller. Sometimes that's popular if the site goes down or if somebody is currently doing maintenance on the site and they're just manually keeping track of what transactions have taken place. Then if you insert those transactions manually, then you may want to also have some manual transactions show up on your export. So you may want to turn that off or on. Uh, for now, we're going to go ahead and turn those off. Uh, exported to fleet. What this option does is it flags the files that have been exported as, yes, I have been previously exported. And that allows the system to keep track of what has been exported and what has not been exported. And it also allows you to get only new transactions that have never been exported, or yes, I would like things that have been previously exported, or you can have a combination of everything. And that's what this option for export status does. So here, if we are flagging them as exported, we have the option to say, I want things that have never been exported before, which is basically saying, I want things that have never been flagged by this as being exported. The other option is previously exported. So that's like, give me everything that has been exported before. And then the uh, last option here is both and all. So that's going to give you a combination of everything. Now, for this example, we're going to use never exported. What that's going to do is it's going to give us only the transactions that have never been exported for the given date range that we're going to select down here. Before we select the date range, we're going to jump over to the file type. So we need to select what file format do we want this export to be in. So we're going to select the drop down. We have some defaults here that uh, this is going to use our default template that's already set up and it's going to give you a majority of all the information that is tracked on the transaction. So, you know, the account, the quantity, the total, the price, everything there that's captured is going to be in one of these templates. Uh, you can simply select an Excel file format. You can select an ASCII, CSV, or SDF file format. And then we have some others that are here that you may want to select. The extended ASCII and ASCII CSV uh, and SDF file formats 
are pretty much the same as this, but they have some extended prompting and other features that are just not in the standard export. So if some of the data that you're exporting does not show up, then you may want to do an extended export if some of those features are not being displayed. Um, so we're going to just go ahead and select CSV. I think CSV is one of the most popular ones, uh, that and Excel. Once we uh, select the uh, file format, now we need to define what date format and what time format are we going to export in. If you're exporting and planning on importing that data into a third-party program, then this date and time format may be important because your application may be expecting the data in a certain way. If the date and time format is incorrect here, then it may error out in your third-party applications. So just something to keep in mind that if you are getting weird results and you were exporting previously, you may want to check the date and time format is what you were exporting previously and to ensure that that is set up correctly here. So for example, we're gonna select the date. And for this example, let's just do year, 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 month, month, day, day. So 2021 and then whatever the month and the day is. Export time format. This is just gonna be your time format. So we're gonna just do hours and minutes. Start date and end date. This is going to be when do we want the export to start and end for the transaction time period. So if I want last month's transactions, uh, then you would jump over to last month, select the start, and then you would select the end of the month. This would give us the transactions for um, July 1st through July 31st. If you want all of them, then you may want to come in here and say, I want all transactions for that time frame. And you may also not want to flag them if you plan on exporting them again. If you want only the new transactions for this range that have never been exported, so say you did an export mid-month, half of those transactions have been exported, you only want the second half of that month, then you can come in here, flag them, and say never exported. And that will only give you the new stuff. And then when you import to your third-party application, if you have one, it won't have any duplicate values. We're only getting things that have never been exported before previously. Um, so exported, flagged, and never exported is a popular selection, or both and all, and then just leave the flagging off is fine. Um, and then down here, we have a time. So you'll want to make sure that the time is matching whatever you want it to, to, to export from. So in this case, we're going to do uh, 12 o'clock a.m. And then we're going to do, uh, I just usually do like 11.59 p.m. Uh, but you can change it to whatever you'd like. And then when we hit export, we're going to go ahead and get a file downloaded to our local machine. If there is any transactions that meet our range here, if it doesn't have any transactions, then it may just error out when you select this. So uh, we'll go ahead and just hit export and then it'll save to your computer. The other way to do it, if you don't want to set this up every time you want to export, is to go ahead and set up an export schedule in the scheduler. So if you do it this way, it works in the same way. Um, we are going to have another video on the scheduler if you want to reference that. We'll go over this in more detail. Um, but you can then select, I would like this export to run, and you could set a frequency of how often you want this to export. And you can have it simply delivered to your inbox, and then you can just automate this process. So that's another way to do it. Um, before reviewing the scheduler, there is one other option I'd like to go over, and that is the custom export type. So if we select custom here, we are not going to be using this template anymore. So you're not you're no longer using uh, ASCII CSV predefined template. You are using your own template. So if we do this, now we need to define the custom export format that you want to use. And you could do that through this custom export template here. This you're basically going to hit plus you to add a new template. You're going to give it a name and select the file format that you'd like, Excel or CSV. And then you're going to select all the fields that you would like to show up in your export. And then you're basically creating a custom template with only the data that you want over here on the right. And then hitting save. 
when you select that use custom, you're basically using your template and that data is going to be populated in your export. And that's how you generate uh, file exports from the application.